have your red book in front of you. When the roll is called up yonder, 463 in your red book, turn over there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, sing out the first verse, 463. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Verse 2, on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies. child of God, and it is our blessed hope, the hope of someday seeing our Savior face to face, and then being called out of this crazy world to meet the Lord in the air and to be with Him forever and for all of eternity. Won't that be a blessing? My goodness. Great song, when the roll is called up yonder, and so today we labor for the Lord so that we can earn a crown to cast at His feet someday at the at the uh, Bema Seat of Christ. It's so good to see you this morning. Uh, God bless you as I'm looking throughout the crowd. Uh, see many folks that uh, have, been, have been on my heart and been praying for this week. And I'm so glad that you're here this morning. What a blessing it is to have Kyle and Justine Amen. Jackson with yeah. us. Good. Came all the way up from Texas yeah. to experience the beautiful weather uh, of Minnesota. Amen. Uh, isn't that wonderful? Uh, and uh, no... Uh, but uh, they came up in a good time. This is a good welcome to Minnesota. Now, I don't know what tomorrow's going to be. It might be a snowstorm. But I'm glad uh, Minnesota behaved for one morning uh, and gave them a beautiful morning to enjoy up here. And uh, uh, Brother Jackson is here to help with the building and uh, drywall and tile work. And I so appreciate him and his wife coming with him. And they've got five kids. They're up in the parsonage. And uh, the five kids are in junior church in the nursery and children's church. And so they're scattered abroad. What a blessing. He uh, travels around and uh, helps churches with building uh, projects. And uh, he is my nephew. And uh, just a blessing. It is, that would be uh, my wife's sister's son. And so what a joy it is to have them here with us. And I'm going to have him come and lead us in a word of prayer, all right? I want you to hear his southern accent. He's got yeah. one of those accents that uh, you will enjoy, all right? He's got his cowboy boots on uh, and a hat. I think a cowboy hat probably up in the parsonage, right, brother? Uh, yeah. No, not quite. Oh, okay, all right, very good. So good to have him here, though. He's going to pray for us. If you would pray for the Glavies as Mrs. Glavy is recovering from her hip replacement, and then also continue to pray for Carly as she is uh, recovering from her kidney stone, and then also the Bernhardts, if you'd keep the Bernhardts 
in your prayers as well. The funeral uh, was a beautiful funeral for uh, Brother Bernhardt on Friday, honoring him and uh, his service for the Lord. So let's have a word of prayer. Ask the Lord to bless this morning. And uh, Brother Jackson, if you'd pray for us. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house this morning. God, you've been so good to us, and it is a beautiful day. And uh, Lord, our desire this morning is just to meet with you. We pray that you'd be lifted up and magnified in our worship service. And I pray that you would speak to Amen. us through your word. I pray that you'd give us yes. exactly what we need. If there's one here that's lost, would you bring them to yourself in salvation? And Lord, for those others, uh, Lord, maybe a backsliding or some just need some encouragement, need some strengthening, some help. I pray that you give us what we need today. I pray that you'd be with these that were mentioned. Lord, some dealing with health issues and some dealing with uh, loss of loved ones. Lord, I pray that you'd put your uh, touch on each of them. I pray that they'd be drawn closer to you in this time and that you'd be glorified through their circumstances as well. We want to say we love you, Lord. We thank you for loving us. And I pray yes. that you'd help us today to see uh, you work. And I pray that we'd know your presence today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs>
Amen. Thank you, choir. Good singing this morning. 485. Turn over there. 485, please. And we'll sing this world is not my home. 485. And sing out on the first verse. Choir, sing as you come down. Join us now. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up. with us and we would like to take just a couple of minutes and recognize any first time guests who may be with us here this evening or this morning and uh, let you know that we are thankful for you being in our midst here. If this is your very first time to our church, if you just slip your hand up and we'll get a guest card in your hand right over here. Very good. Sitting by Brother Trendle. It's good to have his guests with us. Michael. So good to have Michael here and uh, very good. So good to have return guests as well. And uh, Tracy, good to see you. Good to have your guests back with you as well. Thank you so much for coming and being our guest here. So good, as I mentioned earlier, to have Kyle and Justine Jackson with us and make sure that you shake their hand and welcome them. And then as we make our way towards the back here, it's good to have Mrs. Pitsenbarger. God bless you. Good to see you here this morning. And it's good to have Mrs. Kingsbury's. Uh, a couple of kids with us, Nathan and Elizabeth. God bless you, and uh, so good to have you here this morning. That's wonderful. And then uh, working our way towards the back. Kelly, God bless you. Good to see you good here amen. this morning. Excellent. What a blessing that is. And Joanne, God bless you. Good to see you here this morning as well. Joanne McGolpin. And I think that's it. I think we got everyone this morning. Very good. So good to have our guests with us. If you would take the next couple of minutes and fill out that guest card, and then the ushers will come, and they'll collect that in just a moment. Very good. Let's get a bulletin in your hand. If you did not receive a bulletin earlier, if you just slip your hand up, and we'll get one to you. Very good. The ushers are coming. <coughs> We're going to go through just a couple of events with you. Don't forget, this afternoon, TNT, looking forward to, yes. to having a great Amen. time <coughs> with the young people for TNT. And then also, uh, we'll have 435 King's Kids that will be in the pavilion. <clears throat> and then 445, we'll have the flame, and uh, that will be a blessing with Brother Mehdi. And then we'll also uh, have our choir practice right down front here at 445. And then tonight is the Lord's Supper service. I'm looking forward to that. We'll have a great time gathered around the Lord's Supper here this evening. And so make sure that you're here to enjoy some time uh, remembering the cross and what Christ did there Amen. at the cross. I thank God for Calvary. <clears throat> yeah. Were it not for Calvary, we would all be uh, 
uh, we, we, we would all be most miserable in our sins. And so thank the Lord that uh, Calvary is uh, there that we can look back on. Then don't forget Wednesday, prayer meeting, Bible study, kids choir will all take place on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then on the back of the bulletin, you'll find a couple of announcements there as well. Several birthdays this week. What a blessing this is. It is Bonnie Purdell's birthday today. All right. I think she must be in the nursery. All right. She's in the nursery. We'll get her tonight. That's good. And then uh, let's see here. Laura Jensen's birthday tomorrow. Right down front here. She is interpreting. And uh, <clears throat> happy birthday to you. And hope you have a wonderful day celebrating. And then Josiah Hansen's birthday. We'll get him tonight as well. He's in junior church. Jenny Waters birthday and let's see here she is in the nursery as well all right Lou Anne Broughton's birthday coming up as well very good Mrs. Broughton happy birthday to you that's on the 17th and then Levi Perdell's birthday is on the 18th and he's in junior church leading that and then uh, uh, <clears throat> we have Robert Waters birthday we'll catch him tonight as well my goodness most of these folks are in junior church running a ministry or uh, enjoying a ministry so and then we have uh, uh, let's see here we will get the uh, Browns this evening as well they're in the nursery and then brother Brown let's see here brother Brown we'll get you and your wife this evening and uh, what a blessing it is uh, to have them uh, celebrating their anniversary and uh, uh, George and his wife the uh, casinos uh, uh, celebrating their anniversary on the 20th so a whole list of people that are celebrating something and if your name is not on there, write it on there and celebrate something. All right, it's a week of celebration. There's something for you to celebrate. Yeah. Very good. All right, I believe that is about it there in the bulletin. I want to draw your attention to a very, very special day we have just around the corner, and that is Friend right, amen. Sunday. Amen. Yeah. How many of you uh, have a friend this morning? You got a friend? Oh, don't be a downer. You got a friend? Raise your hand. I didn't ask if your friend's here. Just is. Do you have a friend? There you go. All right. Yes, yes. Thank God. How many of you have a friend who is not in the auditorium? You have a friend who's not in the auditorium. Hey, that's wonderful. You know what I see? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Don't be a shy Baptist. Very good. You know what I see? I see prospects all over. This is wonderful. Your friends can come and hear the gospel presented and uh, be a part of a wonderful service. We're going to have a great time. Let's have the ushers come, and uh, we're going to pass these out, these flyers, and uh, you're able to give an invitation to a friend. Now, what I would do is I would invite them this afternoon. I mean, don't put any time between now and the time you give the invitation out, all right? So get it out quick so that uh, they can get it on their calendar and plan to be here. And uh, we'll have a wonderful time. 9.30, all the adults are going to be in the main auditorium. We'll start out with a couple of songs, and then we're going to have breakfast together. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. All kinds of... Uh, Danish uh, Danish rolls, and we'll have muffins, and we'll have some donuts, and we'll have coffee. I'm not talking about just any old coffee. I'm talking about gourmet coffee. Amen? Uh, gourmet coffee. Now, I have to trust the individual that's telling me that it's gourmet because I don't drink coffee. Hey, I hope they have hot cocoa for me, huh? That would be a good addition, wouldn't it? Hot cocoa. Do I get a second on that? Uh a few of us. Amen. All right. There's at least five or six of us that would go for some hot cocoa on a Sunday morning. That's a blessing. And I don't even need a snowbank to sip my hot cocoa in. I'll just take it with a nice, beautiful Sunday morning. And uh, then uh, we'll have uh, games and contests and things like that in the uh, Sunday school hour. All the adult classes will be together. The teens will have their own uh, events taking place. And then... Uh, after that, we'll have a, a great service dealing with friendship and also dealing with the greatest friend that mankind has ever had, and that's the friend Jesus Christ. Amen? There's a friend that sticketh closer yes. than a brother. Amen. And so you invite someone to be your guest and come on out that Sunday morning. Let's have a wonderful time together. Very good. I believe those are all the announcements that I have for you. And my wife has an announcement about a very special ladies' activity. 
It's been about seven years since I said this in poem, so we're gonna do this in poem this morning. Okay, so this is for all the ladies and girls. I am here to remind you that the time has come again for all ladies and girls to get together. Yeah. A good time is planned, so bring a friend. The theme is everything beautiful in his time. Can't get much prettier than that. $14 for those ages six to 100, and $7 for those just four or five. That's a fact. The date is Saturday, May 4th. 1230 is the time we have set to begin all of our festivities, a good time you are sure to get. If a mother or daughter you do not have, consider this instead. You can come alone, but such joy you could share if you brought with you a friend. So purchase your tickets now without delay, and we can all hope for a sunny day that Saturday. Taylor will be in the back selling tickets after the service. Thank you. Hey, very good. Thank you for that good announcement. Rhymed it this morning. I can't rhyme all my announcements. That would be impressive, though. But uh, she can do that. And actually, her mother wrote that seven years ago for the church here. So what a blessing it is. Ladies, I'm excited about this special yes. event for you. You're going to have a great time. So get your tickets today. You'll have a, uh, a slot there reserved for you. Let's have the ushers come. And uh, thank you so much, guests, for coming and being with us. Let's give all of our guests a great big hand. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Very good. Excellent. Let's stand together. Let's sing another song. Brother, why don't you come? Would you pick up your gray book, please? Grab the gray book in front of you, and we'll sing page number 20, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. Grab your gray book, page number 20. We read of a beautiful heaven. Sing the first.
other songs that we sing. But if, if you've said goodbye to a loved one in recent months, this is a precious song. It's a precious song. It's a song of hope, really. It's a song of hope because we'll see our loved ones again. We sorrow not as those who have no hope. This morning, my mind goes to Brother Bernhardt and Harold. We just had Harold's. Uh, memorial service right here in the auditorium last Saturday. What a what a song of great comfort and hope to the child of God. I want us to sing that third verse and the fourth verse together. I'm longing to go to that fair heaven. Amen. Oh, what a day that will be. Why don't you lead us through verse number three. I'm longing. I'm longing. Ask God to bless the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for a beautiful day and opportunity to gather freely, Lord, to hear the Amen. word of God preached, dear Lord. And we just ask you to be here in the service today and touch our hearts, Lord, and then touch and bless this offering, Lord, that is used uh, for your glory here in Rochester, spreading the gospel that uh, many would hear the word of God and are saved. And just bless the gift and bless the giver, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Let go. Amen. 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 A great song there. That's all your anxiety, all your care. Bring to the mercy seat. Leave it there. That's yeah. a good song. I'll invite you to turn over with me to 1 John chapter 1 today. And go ahead and stand as you find it if you're able to. 1 John chapter 1. And we're going to be reading verses 7 through 10 responsively. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. I'll begin the passage in verse 7. You join me on verse 8. We'll go back and forth through the end of the chapter. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. Please share with someone who doesn't have a Bible this morning in their hands. And I'll begin in verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. We'll have a word of prayer this morning. Our pastor's going to preach. In just a moment before he does, we'll have a song. Let's ask God's blessing on this service. Lord, thank you so much for today. God, we ask that you bless our preacher as he gets behind this pulpit today and preaches such a great truth. Lord, we also ask that you'd be with the folks who are about to sing. Lord, I pray that it would all work together for your honor and glory today to a decision point in the invitation time. Lord, if there's a lost person here who's not sure of their eternal destination, I pray that this would be the last day that is spent in that condition. And Lord, if there's someone who just needs to draw closer to you, which is all of us, help us to do so today. Bless the preaching, bless the preacher, bless the word of God today as it's opened. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Uh, 
I hope we all have our cups held up in the air for the Lord to come by and meet with us in a very special way. This morning in the New Hope Adult class, we were dealing with the church and what is the church and how important the church is. And uh, the church is ecclesia, a called out assembly of God's people. Yeah. I'm standing on the platform this morning and I'm looking out over the crowd. This is a wonderful gathering this morning. Like the house of God is full. And I wish I could have enough time to just spend a few minutes with every one of God's people. I look out and I see individuals that I've been praying for this week. I see Ethan and Chelsea. And boy, you've been on my heart this week. I've been praying for you. And we did some texting back and forth about the softball season coming up. Amen. It's going to be great, folks. Uh, W's all the way for sure. And uh, then I look over here and I see uh, uh, just different folks that I've just been praying for. So good to see God's people together around the word of God. And, you know, we can never take it for granted. I think sometimes uh, we forget COVID-19. I think we forget that. And I think it's good to be reminded. Remember when we couldn't meet for several weeks and our hearts were broken. And then... Uh, the people of God came together again, and it was just the fellowship of the believers. It's, it's something that you cannot take for granted, and we are blessed this morning to be able to gather. I see the teenagers here, the teenage girls, teenage guys. What a privilege it is to have teen class, and what a joy it is to be able to gather around the Word of God. My heart's desire is that God would meet with us this morning. There's three words that I'm going to focus in on this morning. Last week, I had three words, uh, but the gift. Amen? That was last week's message, but the gift. This morning, I want to focus in on uh, just three simple words. They're found in verse number seven. And uh, the blood. And uh, the blood. But the gift and the blood. Thank God for the blood that Jesus Christ shed for each and every one of us. My heart rejoices to be able to take my Bible and open it up and still see the words. Yeah. But the blood. Yeah. It haven't been cut out. No, no. They're still in the word of God. I'm thankful for that. And uh, here we go. Let's uh, look into... Uh, the message here this morning, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Dearly, Father, Lord, we thank you for this morning. God, my heart is so full as a pastor standing on the platform and looking out at your good people, Lord. I'm so excited that we're able to gather together as saved individuals, knowing for sure that we're on our way to heaven. But God, this morning in our midst, there are individuals who are not 100% sure that they're on their way to heaven. And I pray, dear God, that this would be the very last service that they ever are in that kind of condition spiritually. God, may they get it settled with you and know for sure when they leave the church property that heaven is their home, Lord. There's no reason that we ought to live in doubt of eternity. So God, give wisdom and guidance this morning. Order my words according to your will. May you be exalted and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The book of 1 John was written by the apostle who is known as the apostle whom Christ loved. He's the one that during the Last Supper laid his head on the bosom of Jesus Christ. And expressed his love towards Jesus. As Jesus was taking his last breath on the cross, it was John that was sitting there watching Jesus Christ die. It was John that heard the seven cries from the cross. It was John that was sitting there watching Jesus Christ, but not just the body of Jesus Christ, but the blood trickled down from that cross that afternoon. It was John who sat there and listened to the agony the cry, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was John that watched the body of Jesus Christ being uh, uh, beaten and uh, bruised. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 14, uh, 
as many <clears throat> were astonied at thee. His vesture was so marred more than any man, and his form more than any son of man. As John looked at the body of Jesus Christ hanging there on the cross like a chunk of hamburger that had been beaten and whipped and scourged and laughed at, scourged and laughed at, that body giving forth its life of blood as he looked at that scene. I believe there was a scene etched in his mind that day as he looked at Calvary. It was the scene of the blood of Jesus dripping down from that old rugged cross. Yeah. Can you imagine uh, the astonishment of the multitude? Uh, can you imagine uh, how John uh, looked, th looked at the body of Christ in horror? Have you ever come uh, to an accident and you looked or maybe you helped an individual uh, whose body was thrown from their vehicle and was there on the road? Uh, I was driving uh, down uh, or up North Broadway one day, and the man was on a little moped, and he was cutting across the street as an intersection. He was cutting across the street, and this great big truck hit the man, and he went flying. I saw saw the whole thing he went flying off of his moped. And he was lying there, crying and screaming out because of pain that he was in. He parked the car and hopped out, ran over there, and the ambulance came, and so on and so forth. But can you imagine? How horrific it would be to see a body so deformed from the beating and the anger of the, of the mob that had taken Jesus Christ and laughed at him and, and scourged him. John had etched in his mind the blood of Jesus that was shed there on Calvary. The word blood is found 447 times in our Bible. The blood is the very foundation of our salvation. Without the blood, uh, there's no forgiveness of sin, folks. Amen. Notice whose blood yeah, it was. Amen. The Bible says, look at this in verse 7. It says, and the blood of, uh, read it with me, Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth Amen. us from all Amen. sin. The blood of whom? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It was Jesus Christ's blood that Amen. was shed there on the cross for you. Why Jesus' blood? Because Jesus' blood was sinless blood. And we can't understand that because uh, so often we become comfortable in our sin. Uh, and sin is just, it's in our nature to sin against God. But it wasn't in the nature of Jesus Christ. He was pure. He was holy. He was without spot or blemish. And Jesus Christ's blood was required for our sins to be removed. Yeah. It was perfect blood. Why the Son of God? Why Jesus? Because no other blood could remove the sin of mankind. It was superior blood, uh, yes. Because it was divine blood. It was God's blood for mankind. The Bible says in Hebrews 9 and verse 12, Neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood. He entered Amen. it once into the holy place, Amen. having obtained uh, eternal redemption for us. Amen. It was sinless blood. Amen. It was superior blood. It was divine blood. God in the flesh poured out his life blood on the cross so that you and I could have our sins forgiven. What an amazing picture of love that Jesus Christ demonstrated there on the cross for us. And the blood. And the blood. And the blood. There are some uh, religious individuals uh, and I'm not talking about pagans this morning. I'm talking about in the religious sector. I'm talking about some even Baptists. This is a quote from a Baptist leader. He said this. And there is no sense in getting teary-eyed and mystical about the blood. There is no saving in that blood itself. That came from a Baptist leader, not my leader. My leader's right there. Amen? Amen. It's the word of God. Yeah. Without the blood, there's no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And so we live in a society that 
that minimizes the value of the blood. And this morning, I want to come to you as your pastor, and I want to exalt the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. this morning. Amen. It's precious. Without it, there's no way that you and I can get to heaven. There's no way Amen. that you and I could ever be relieved from our sin. Right. The blood, yeah. and without the blood, there's no remission of sin. And so while some minimize and devalue the blood of Jesus Christ, this morning in our text, I want to lift up the blood of Jesus Christ. I want to say it's available for you this morning if you're here without knowing for sure that you're on your way to heaven. There's a fountain filled with blood uh, drawn from Emmanuel's Amen. veins. Uh, and it's still fresh for you. And it's still available Amen. for your sins this morning. Yes. Amen. Let me say this morning, uh, number one, uh, the blood uh, and the blood was shed willingly. And the blood uh, was shed willingly. Oh, how wonderful it is that the blood was shed for every sin that has ever entered into this world uh, through mankind's decisions. As the day of crucifixion drew near, Christ did not go and hide uh, and flee from the presence of the high priest or the religious rulers of his day. No, no, no. He didn't run away from it. No. Uh, but instead, he made himself available so that he could give his blood. Uh, he freely, he willingly gave uh, his blood. I don't willingly give any blood. I don't like giving blood. I remember the first blood draw that I received. I had for, for a term life insurance. You know how it is. They put that rubber band around your arm. They say, okay, now go ahead and flex, and the blood vein pops out. Say, oh, that's a nice one. That's just talking just like a vampire. You know what I mean? Oh, that's really good. We'll get a lot. How many, a gallon and a half? You know. How about one vial, all right? And so the blood vein pops out, and they, they uh, get their needle out. Now, this won't hurt, hurt real bad. It'll be just real quick here. And then they pull the cap off, you know, and it's a needle six inches long. And then they click that thing, click, 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 click. It sounds like they're clicking a, a, a you know, a 10-penny nail. And uh, then they push the air out of it. All right, this will take just a little while. We're going to poke it in, and then uh, we're just going to let it sit there, and it's going to fill on its own. And then you'll be able to tell. It's kind of interesting if you watch it because the heartbeat you can kind of see as the blood is surging into that vial. Yeah, thanks a lot. And so I'm sitting there. It didn't take very long. I saw my blood. And I got a little oozy, a little bit, a little bit lightheaded, thinking, "Oh my goodness, that's coming right out of my vein right there." Huh? I don't like to give blood. I will not sign up. I will not. I will not stand in line to give blood. And I thank God for the blood donors here this morning. God bless you. I talked to one gentleman. I, I think he had a, a lapel pin on. How many gallons of blood? Something like that. It was a whole lot of liters, gallons of blood that he had donated over the years. Incredible. I don't like giving blood. And if you prick me, I'm going to pull my hand back. I'll guarantee you, you'll do the same thing if somebody comes up to you and says, hold on, brother, close your eyes and give you a good jab. You'll say, uh-uh, I don't want any part of that. You're going to pull blood out of me. But you know what? Listen, Jesus Christ gave freely his blood. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, he had the disciples pray, and he went a little bit further. And the Bible says he sweat as if it were drops of blood. Yes. He gave blood for us there in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then he was taken to the high priest and, and stood before Pilate. And Pilate said, you can scourge him. And they brought him out and they flogged him. They scourged him with the cat of nine tails. And the blood came gushing out of his body. The blood was shed there at that post, that whipping post that Jesus stood at. They then took the body of Jesus Christ and they placed, a, they placed a, a cross upon him. And before they placed the cross upon him, they took a crown of thorns. And they pushed those crowns of thorns down into his brow, causing his brow to bleed. That's the third time he bled for us. In the garden, at the scourging post, with the crown of thorns, 
pressing down over his brow. He carried the cross up Golgotha and he laid there, laid the cross down <clears throat> with the help of Simon as he brought the cross up. And Jesus Christ, after the cross was laid down, uh, he laid down his hands to be nailed at the cross as the fourth time uh, Jesus Christ gave his blood freely gave his blood Amen. he put his yeah. feet together there on the yeah. cross and they took a spike and they drove that spike down through his feet and the blood gushed out of his feet out of his legs again the blood being given for mankind freely willingly it was Jesus Christ that allowed his feet to be nailed together there on the cross it was Jesus Christ while he was going up that, that hill to Golgotha, they took the beard of Jesus and they pulled the beard of Jesus out of his face. That's the sixth time that he gave his blood freely for us. Yeah. You men who have beards, you know how tender your beard is. <clears throat> if somebody were to come by and yank that beard out of your face, how would it pull uh, your skin and the blood would begin to ooze from your face? The sixth time Jesus Christ gave his blood. And then after Jesus Christ said, it is finished. A Roman soldier came along and he thrust the spear into the side of Jesus Christ. And for the seventh time, Jesus gave his blood yeah. freely for us. And the blood came out of the side of Jesus. Hey, it was all free of charge. It was willing Jesus right. shed Amen. his blood for us. Yeah. What an amazing right. Savior we have. Seven yeah. times, yeah. if you know uh, the meaning of numbers, the seventh number is the number of completion. And when that old sword was thrust, or that spear was thrusted into the side of Jesus, it was the seventh time the blood came from the body of Jesus Christ. It is finished. Yes, it's Amen. Finished. Amen. It's Amen. Amen. And the blood, and the blood, Jesus Christ laid down his life freely for us. First John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. He laid down his life for us. John chapter 10, the Bible tells us there. John chapter 10 and verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. You see that? Jesus Christ did not take up arms. He did not struggle with those soldiers. He did not push them away. Hey, even just the answer that Jesus Christ said in the Garden of Gethsemane knocked them back, did it not? I am he, uh, and they fell backwards. But Jesus Christ didn't put up a fight. Let me ask you, if you were going to be hauled, not to jail, but to the scourging post, would you put up a fight? I think I would. I don't want to go to that stake. I don't want to go and have my hands nailed to the cross. Wouldn't you uh, try to hold your hands back and as they pull them out and stretch them out, my arms would be pulling back towards my body. No, no, I don't want my hands to have a hole and a nail through the, the wrist or the hand. Uh, I don't want my feet to be nailed to the cross. Yeah. Would we not pull back? Yeah. And Jesus Christ said, no man took it from me. I yeah. laid it down. That's an incredible thought. I laid it down. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because he loved you. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. He loved me. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down. That word lay means a passive horizontal position a passive horizontal position do you know what I'm talking about this morning I'm talking about the God of the universe deity in the flesh 
What is deity doing uh, being passive for the sin of mankind? Only uh, motivated by love uh, could the God of the universe lay down his life for you and I. And the blood was shed willingly. Why was it shed? Why would he lay down his life? Because he loved us. The Bible says in John 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So loved. You go ahead and measure the word so. How big is the word so? So big that yes, you can't, you can't right. put a measurement on it. Right. So loved. That's how he loved you. That's how he loved me. So loved. First John chapter 4 and verse 19 says, We love him because he first loved us. Jesus Christ Amen. laid down his life for us because he loved us. John chapter 15. The Bible says there in verse 13, John 15 and verse 13, no greater, uh, greater love hath no man than this, that a man uh, lay down his life for a friend. Huh? The choir sang this morning, written in red. I didn't correlate those two. It's what God orchestrated this morning. I love you, written in red, as the blood streamed down that cross, yes. God was saying, I love you. Amen. I love you and I care for you. There's only one reason that I would shed my blood willingly, and that is so that you can have your sins forgiven. Why would he lay down his life? Because he loved. His love was so great. His compassion was so deep. As he looked at the multitude, he was moved with compassion why did he cry from the cross? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Father, forgive them. Why would he forgive? Because his compassion was so great for you and I. And the blood, and the blood was shed willingly. Number two, the blood cleanses holy. The blood cleanses holy. It was given willingly, but it was not a partial Solution to the sin of mankind. No, 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 no. It covered the whole thing. Amen. It took care of every sin that mankind had ever sinned against a holy God. Sin had polluted and sin had defiled mankind. But look at this. Amen. First John chapter 1 and verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Here it is. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. See the next word? Say it, church. Amen. Cleanses. Say it again. Cleanseth. Cleanseth. Isn't that a beautiful word? Yes. Say it again. Cleanseth. Cleanseth. Do you love what the blood does for you? It cleanses. Every sin. Every, uh, every wrong uh, deed, every right deed with the wrong motive, he cleansed it all away. What a God. What blood amen. was sacrificed for you and I. Yes, all the blood removes our sins holy. Holy. The Bible says in verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. I like this next phrase. And to, what's the next word? Cleanse. Cleanse. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Have you done something wrong? Are you ashamed of something that you did in your teen years? Is there something that you've done in your 20s that you would look back on and say, I wish I had never had done that before? Huh? Let me ask you, is the guilt in your heart? Is the sh shame in your life? From sin, Satan's a dirty player. What he does, he lures a person in to sin. All right? He lures them in. Why don't you go ahead and engage in this? You deserve it, and, and it'll help you, right? Aren't those the lies that Satan brings us? Absolutely. And so then the individual sees that it is good and pleasant to the eye and good to eat as Eve did. 
and then they engage in the sin. They participate in whatever the temptation was. And then right after that, Satan comes along and says, wow, what a horrible individual you are. You ever had a visit like that from Satan? Yeah. What a horrible individual. And he begins to pile on the guilt and the shame of sin. And let me tell you this, sin always brings guilt. It always brings guilt. You know how it is? I know how it is. We think to ourselves, boy, we should, I, I should not have done that. Oh, I, I should not have said those words. I should not have cut off that individual because now I'm going to the same store as they are. And I'm parking right beside them. Oh, I should not have done that, right? The guilt, the shame of sin, and sometimes, listen, there are secrets in individuals' lives. They're never mentioned. But your conscience is loaded with guilt from those actions against the thrice holy God. And you push it down at night. And you push it down in the quietness of the evening. And it keeps popping up. You know what I'm talking about. And it keeps coming up. And it keeps coming up. If I could just get rid of this. Look at this. John said this about the guilty conscience. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20. Let's go there. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20. Listen. Because of guilt and shame... Sometimes people, uh, their health begins to crumble because they carry shame with them and they carry the, the weight of guilt with them everywhere they go. And God didn't create the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions of an individual to carry uh, the weight and the burden of sin. God never planned uh, for mankind's soul to engage in sin. And so... Uh, as man dives into wickedness and perversion and, and sin that lures their sinful nature, as they engage in those thing, things, Satan comes along and he puts the weight of sin on the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions of an individual. And they walk around instead of with their head held high. They tuck their chin in their chest and they look down at the ground and they can hardly lift their head up. Reminds me of my son this past week. He came to church and they're coming in for school and he saw Brother Stephen. It's the, not David or Josh, all right, so I won't name the other one, but you can kind of figure out. He called Brother Stephen. I don't know where he got the, the term or what. He said, hello, goofball. <laughs> what in the world? David heard him, and he spun him around and brought him right into my office. <laughs> I'm in my office, and David said, now, Dad, um, somebody just said this. <laughs> and I said, you're dismissed, David. I'll have a word with him. And I dealt with the situation very thorough. Amen. God came and met with us in a very special way. <laughs> he got everything right with the Lord, got everything right with his dad. And then we started going down the hall. Do you know how long that hall is when you had to go apologize to the assistant pastor? That's a long hall, half a mile long at least. And there he is. <laughs> We come out of the office, everything's fine, everything's right with the Lord, all right? And uh, we start walking down the hall. The head is down all the way down. The shoulders are bent low. It's almost like he was going to crawl right into the tile of the floor. I said, son, chin up, chin up, chin up. We're going to go talk to Brother Stephen, and everything's going to be fine. I'd tell him about three times, <laughs> chin up, son, it's going to be fine. Uh, he won't, he, he's not going to chew you out. Not too bad, at least, huh? He answered the door, or he knocked on the door ever so gently. You know when it's candy time? <laughs> hey, is there candy in there? But man, when it's time to apologize, it's... <laughs> the door answered, or the door opened up. Brother Stephen came over, and 
got down to his level and so Nathan has something to tell you. I'm sorry, but he went on and apologized. Brother Stephen said, oh, you're fine, you're fine. He's very gracious about it. And uh, they got it taken care of. But, you know, that, that walk all the way from my office to Brother Stephen's office, from one end of the hall to the, to the other end of the hall, that's a long walk when you have a guilty conscience, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. Well, life is long when you have a guilty soul, a soul that's stricken with shame. And it seems like every day is another chore of life. Huh? It's another hurdle to get over, and God didn't make us to live life that way. He lived us that we might, he lived and, so, and died so that we would have life and that we'd have it more abundantly in Christ Jesus. Look at this in verse 20, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20. <clears throat> For if our hearts, our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. And knoweth all things, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And I believe today in many, many of God's people's soul, they have a heart that is condemning them. And they live a life under condemnation of the heart. Listen, the blood was shed so that he could remove the sin and the guilt of sin and the shame of sin. And you don't have to live that way anymore, child of God. Satan knows how to play both sides of the game. He knows how to lure you in to the sin. And then he knows how to bury you under the sin with shame and guilt. Does he not? He's a dirty player. So I have good news for you today. The blood of Jesus cleanses our sins wholly. Gone, gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Thank God. They're under the blood of Jesus. I like that song as I already mentioned. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins tonight for the Lord's Supper. We'll have uh, several cups here of Grape juice. Little cups. All for the sole purpose of reminding you and me uh, about the blood that was shed. So the blood can cleanse us from all our sin and cleanse the guilt and the shame of sin with the, with the sin that he has forgiven us of. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22, without shedding of blood is no remission. This morning, the child of God ought to look at the cross, see the blood, and say, thank you, God, for the blood that was shed for me. Thank you, God. Let me say number three. And the blood is offered freely. Amen. And the blood is offered to every one of us today. Freely. The blood was shed. Uh, how priceless is the blood? Uh, you can't put a dollar amount on it. If the blood could only be purchased for a million dollars, it'd be millionaires in heaven. Hmm? If the blood could be purchased, then it'd only be purchased by those who could afford it. And oh, the price tag that would be on that blood. Uh, but the Bible says... It's for all of us. The blood was shed for every group and every race on earth. Hey, God is not a respecter of persons. He says, whosoever will. Amen. Amen. Whosoever. The Bible says Amen. in verse 6, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 6, down to verse 10, there's 17 pronouns that show that the blood includes all. Us, we, 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 you add them up. They're all over. We, 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 we. Uh, the Bible says here, it's for all mankind. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Amen. son. Amen. Yes, the blood Amen. is for you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says... For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If Jesus can cleanse and save, 
the thief on the cross. In his dying words, the last moments of life here on earth, can he not cleanse you? Can he not save you? If Jesus was able to take the woman uh, caught in adultery and look into her eyes and have compassion and say your sins are forgiven thee, go and sin no more. Don't you think that Jesus Christ can forgive you and his blood can cleanse Amen. you from your Amen. sins? Amen. If Jesus Christ was able to get out of a boat one day and walk to the shore and there face a maniac at Gadara and take that maniac at Gadara and put a a, a mind uh, that was touched, uh, a mind that could think clearly and clothe him uh, and save him from his insanity uh, and demon possession. Don't you think God can come by uh, and the blood of Jesus Christ can save you from your sins? Don't you Amen. think so? Amen. And the blood uh, of Jesus Christ. And the blood. Uh, if Jesus Christ came and showed himself to Paul on the road to Damascus or Saul on the road to Damascus, and save a Christian murderer, don't you think that Jesus Christ's blood can save you from your sins? You say, but pastor, I've done too many things wrong. But no, you haven't. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth all of our sins. Right. It's the blood and the blood and the blood. Do you love the blood Amen. this morning? How precious is the blood I was reading the story about the song, Just As I Am. A lady wrote the song. My name is Charlotte. In her middle years, she came down with a disease that took away her mobility, and she was not able to walk and go to places that she desired to go to, left her crippled. And she was feeling so... Uh, Worthless before the Lord. She felt like she couldn't do that which God wanted her to do. She took a pen and she had written 150 hymns. The one that's most popular to us today is the song, Just As I Am. And as she was sitting there in her crippled body, she penned, Just As I Am. Just as I am, I'm going to come, Lord. Without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. It's the blood. It's the blood. Let me ask you this morning. Where are you going to go when you die? Well, pastors, there's a lot of religion around. I'm not asking about religion. I'm asking about, according to the word of God, where are you going to spend eternity? I look out into the... The, the number of faces here this morning. When I get to heaven as a pastor, I want to see every face that's in this auditorium. I want to see every face in heaven. Yes. I don't want one person to miss out on the, the beauty of heaven and the worship of heaven and spend one moment in that place called hell. I want everybody to go to heaven. But the only way that you're going to be able to go to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In the last several weeks, my mind has been stirred about the thought that I believe, and I know from the word of God, Matthew chapter 7, our church houses are filled with unbelieving Christians. In other words, individuals who claim to be Christian, but they are not saved. There's never been a Holy Spirit a uh, collision in their life that brought them under conviction. Right. Where they said, dear God, I'm on my way to hell. Please save me. There hasn't been, that's why, listen, that's why we can fall asleep in church. That's why church is boring. That's yeah. why serving God has no interest in our hearts and our minds. That's why a prayer meeting is, is uh, just a, another work and it's labor. And why would I have to do that? Because there's nothing burning. The Spirit of God is not uh, burning in their heart. The Spirit of God is not drawing them to spiritual growth. Because it's just a title. Right. 
It's just a title. Amen. The Bible talks about many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Because the church houses are filled with lost people. They claim the name of Christ and know all about salvation. That's why, listen, that's why we have no spiritual discernment in churches. Spirit yeah. of God that lives inside of a person reveals things, but there's no revealing because the Spirit isn't indwelling them. They just know the terminology. The other night, I think my watch stopped. Are we done yet? Huh? Pastor's got 11 more minutes. <clears throat> Actually, no, I'm, I'm done. No. It's the blood this morning. Amen. You're sitting here, and you say, well, I have prayed a prayer. I'm glad you prayed a prayer, but it's not a prayer that saves you. Yeah, no. It's God coming to your heart, convicting your heart, and the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to your sin account. And you come to Jesus knowing that your sin condemns you to hell, knowing that your sin needed payment on the cross of Calvary, and it was the blood of that was shed for you and shed for me. And we come to Christ and say, Dear Jesus, please save me from the condemnation of my sin. And God saves you from your sins. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all our sins. How about it this morning? The blood's available for you. It's offered freely. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Let me ask you this morning. Would you be willing to accept Christ as your Savior? I don't want you to sit, just sit through another invitation service. I don't want you to have the battle back and forth and just try to endure another invitation of not accepting Christ as your Savior. I don't know who's saved and I don't know who's lost in our church. I'll tell you, some are lost. And Jesus loves you and he has provided salvation for you. Why don't you come and accept him today? He's waiting for you. With his arms outstretched full of love, why don't you come? Maybe you'd say, Pastor, I remember the day when I accepted Christ as my Savior. I know where I'm going. When I die, here's my hand. I know that. I know that. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Amen. You can put your hands down. Maybe you'd say, Pastor, I've raised my hand for quite some time. But to be honest with you, deep down in my heart, it's not a settled matter. And the blood, I understand this morning, is the only thing that can save me from my sins. That's me this morning. Here's my hand, Pastor. Would you pray for me? Would you slip your hand up? That's me this morning. I'm not 100% sure that heaven is my home, but I want it to be. Pastor, here's my hand and the blood. I want the blood to be applied to my sin account. Here's my hand. You'd say, Pastor, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know that I'm on my way to heaven when I die. But I have not followed the Lord in believer's baptism. I want to get baptized. That's me this morning. Here's my hand. Would you slip your hand up? Yes, yes. God bless you. I see that hand. Yes, sir. I see that hand. Yes, sir. I see that hand as well. God bless you. Why don't you come this morning? Follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Brother Stephen is right down front here. You can come at this time. That's right. Why don't you come? Yes. Yes, God bless you. Individuals are coming for baptism. Why don't you join them? Ah, what a blessing. Maybe you'd say, Pastor, I've been walking around with the guilt and the shame of sin that has already been forgiven me. Seems like everywhere I go, I have... A, 
a burden on my heart. I can't enjoy the abundant Christian life like God wants me to. Pastor, that's me today. And I see through the word of God that the blood of Jesus Christ can free me from that. Oh, maybe this morning you'd like me to pray for you in that regard. Why don't you slip your hand up? That's me. Yes, yes. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Who else? That's me. I don't want to live another day with guilt on my heart and shame on my heart. Pastor, would you pray for me? Yes, sir. I see that hand. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. Oh, the Lord is doing a work this morning. The Lord is doing a work. How about it? Maybe you'd say, Pastor, through the preaching of God's word, there was something else that God spoke to my heart about, and I want to respond to his leading in my heart this morning. Here's my hand. Pastor, would you pray for me? Something else that was mentioned. Yes, yes, God bless you. God bless you. I see those hands this morning. You can put your hands down. And the blood of Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this morning. God, I pray that you would do a work in our hearts. Lord, help us to come to the cross and first say thank you for the blood and then receive the blood that you have shed for us. Lord, if there's one or two or several here this morning who have not accepted you as their Savior, I pray, God, that today would be the day of salvation. Lord, if there's some who have not followed you in believer's baptism, help them to get it settled this morning. God, I pray that you'd help those who are crushed under the weight of and shame of sin and the guilt of sin, God. I pray that you would come along and free them from that burden of sin, Lord. Please, I pray that you do the work that only you can do this morning. May you be honored and glorified in Jesus' name, we pray. With our heads by and eyes closed, the altar is going to be open. Why don't you come to the altar as the instruments begin to play? That's right. Why don't you come this morning? Christians are coming, yes. Oh, why don't you come? Just as I am, thou one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. come for membership. Why don't you just come on up? There we go. Yes, that's right. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Oh, the Lord is good. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Thank God for the blood. seated.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this morning. Oh, what a blessing it has been to be in your house. I pray, God, that you would bless the decisions that have been made this morning. God, we look forward to the baptism in just a few minutes. May you be honored through that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a blessing it is this morning to have Louise Batanza come and ask for membership. She's been coming to church since, uh, oh, about September. And uh, what a joy it has been to get to know her. Amen. She was saved uh, as a little girl, uh, five years old, in a Baptist church in California. And then got baptized there in California and uh, just moved here not too long ago. And so what a joy it is to have her and get to know her. And so my motion is to uh, accept her into the membership of our church. Is there a second on that? All right, Brother Brown, very good. Uh, and Brother Tim back there, and Brother Waters, all right, very good. And Brother Thorson, excellent. Do you need any more, Chris? All right, you're good. All right, excellent. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, very good. God bless you. We are thrilled that you are a part Amen. of the church. And uh, it's very special to be a, a part of a church and just a church family. And uh, God... Uh, allows an individual Christian to serve in many different areas within the church and right, we're just excited right. for you. We want to be a blessing to you and I know you will be a blessing to the church and uh, praise the Lord. We're going to have a baptism and before or right after the baptism then we'll have Louise come up with uh, Amy and they'll stand right here and before you go that way you come this way all right and you'll welcome her into the membership. All right are we ready brother John? Okay, very good, excellent. We'll sing a song, uh, fellas, if you'll move the platform. 145, turn over there, please. 145, I love to tell the story. We'll sing a few verses of this, or however long it takes for them to be ready. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Uh, Nice and warm for you. Yes. I'm going to have you turn. I'm going to have you turn. There we go. There we go. And cross your arms. Cross your arms like this. And then when I bring you back, just bend your knees. Okay. This is Michael. And two Saturdays ago, we went over to his home and we were able to sit on the couch. And he had his three sons there in the living room with us. And we were able to go through the plan of salvation and draw it out and uh, go through the scriptures together. And Michael said that he would like to ask Jesus Christ to come into his heart and wash away his sins. And so he did that with his three sons. And uh, now he knows that he's on his way to heaven. What a blessing that is. The two young men that got baptized last Sunday morning are his boys. And so what a joy it is to be able to see him follow the Lord in believer's baptism. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection to walk in newness of life. Amen. Wonderful. Did a good job. 
Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Special to see individuals follow the Lord in believers' baptism because of the meaning behind it as we stand there in the water. It's a picture of Christ dying on the cross for our sins. As I bring an individual underneath the water, it's a picture of the burial. The, he was put under the ground and the individual is put under the water. Then when I bring him up out of the water, it's a picture of Jesus Christ rising from the dead. And so that's what baptism is. It's not washing away our sins. It's a typology of Calvary for us. And I'm so excited for Michael. Make sure you uh, congratulate him. What a great decision that was. Excellent. All right, brother, you've got a, another song here. He's going to lead that. And then, uh, Amy, if you'll go ahead and bring Louise right up front here. Before you go back that way, I know all you ladies are going to get your tickets. And so Miss Taylor is back there. But before you go back there to get your ticket, come up here and welcome Louise to the church uh, family. And we'll have a great time that way. God bless you. Yes, sir. To me. 